I'm going to go with the microphone if that's okay because I have not got quite as strong a voice as uh, Richard, but thank you for those kind words. Um, <laughs> I'd like to start by saying that on behalf of my beautiful wife and I, <laughs> thank you so much for being here today. Um, it feels like a lifetime ago that on a cold February morning I asked Laura to marry me on Ely Beach and thankfully she said yes. And that set off a series of events from excited phone calls with friends and family when we were finally able to get hold of them, <laughs> to various engagement celebrations, and to spending much longer than I care to admit deciding on the colour arrangements for the flowers today. <laughs> um, I realised that getting to this corner of Scotland isn't the easiest, and many of you have travelled from far and wide to be here today. In particular, the Hardy and Gillen clan, who have come all the way from sunny California. <laughs> My aunt Karen, who has come from the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. <laughs> and towards the back, Dave and Gwenifer, who have come all the way from Dubai to be here. <laughs> Hopefully, you, so you can see why we love this part of the world so much, especially when the sun comes out on a day like today. Before I go any further, um, I have to warn you all that I've got a lot of people to thank, and whilst I would like to thank you all individually, I've been warned that these amazing candles that my dad made for us will only burn for two hours. <laughs> um, and I also know, like Richard said, you're all desperate for your dinner, and I'm looking at you in particular, Adrian. <laughs> Firstly, I would like to thank my new mother and father-in-law, Brenda and Richard. A wedding is a, a coming together of two families, and I couldn't have hoped to have joined a friendlier or more supportive family than yours. Um, since the moment we met, thank you for being so welcoming and for making Scotland feel like home. Um, uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to apologise for all of the things that I've broken in your home over the years. <laughs> um, and whilst I can't promise that I'll get any less clumsy, I can promise you that the one thing I won't break is Laura's heart. <laughs> and to my mum and dad, I know that it must be really difficult for you to have your favourite child uh, live so far away. <laughs> I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Since uh, my nieces Gracie, Bella and Darcy came along, I don't think any of us have been the favourite. <laughs> but I think while we're on that, I think they deserve a massive round of applause. I mean, so But returning to my original point, I know that you'd both prefer it if I lived closer to home, uh, but I also know that you're so happy for Laura and I and the life that we've built in Scotland together, and you're also so excited for the next chapter of our lives to start now that we're a married couple. I would also like to thank Laura's amazing bridesmaids, Susan and Rachel. <laughs> Now, I know that there was a lot of debate about the dresses, and I don't apologise for staying well clear of that. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll all agree they look absolutely yeah. stunning today. Yeah. <laughs> Susan, yeah, you were obviously there the first night that Laura and I met in the Gilly Deer in Edinburgh, and I know how much Laura values your opinion, so thank you for not telling her to do a runner earlier on. <laughs> I also know that today won't change the fact that You'll always be the person that understands Laura better than anyone else in this room. And you'll always be the person that finds out the latest news and gossip about Laura, especially if it's about me. Um, growing up, I never thought that I would want another sister, but today I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud today to be able to call myself your brother-in-law and to be an uncle to your amazing wee boy, Harris. And Rachel, I know that I stole your ABC clubbing partner from you, so thank you for not holding that against me. Um, when Laura introduced me to you, I could tell how incredibly close you both are. You're basically sisters. Laura is so lucky to have you as a friend, and I'm so lucky to be also able to call you a friend as well. 
Thank you both for keeping Laura so calm today. Um, I don't know how you've managed it, but I'll definitely be asking you for tips afterwards. Um, so, a toast to the bridesmaids, to Susan and Rachel. That brings me to my best man, Chris. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for arriving on time today for the first time in your life. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, seriously, thanks for all your help and support in the lead up to today and for organising the most incredible stag do or business trip to Dublin, uh, which helped to bring all of my groups of friends together, so thank you for that. Um, it should come as no surprise that this is the second time in the space of a year that you've been a best man. Um, you've been an amazing friend to me over the years and I love the fact that from day one you've also been, you've made such an effort with Laura and she now counts as a really good friend too. You're such a generous guy, uh, you'd go out of your way to help absolutely anybody and you always seem to know when to reach out and it doesn't go unnoticed, so thank you very much. Now, it wouldn't be much of a group speech if I didn't say a few words about the most important person in the room today, my beautiful wife, Laura. I'm sure you'll all agree she looks absolutely stunning today. Laura, uh, what can I say? I could roll out all of the old cliches. You're beautiful, funny, kind, clever, and you are all of those things. But the truth is, to everyone in this room, and in particular to me, you are so much more than that. You're so thoughtful, and you get so much joy out of other people's happiness, and you've helped to make me a better person. You're so fun and spontaneous, and you've brought so much happiness and laughter to my life. And you're so supportive. You're my biggest cheerleader, and you make me feel as if we can achieve anything we want to together. When I first met you, I was isolated and a long way from home in a city and a country where I didn't know anyone outside of my work colleagues. And from the moment I met you, you brought so much light and life into my life and you inspired me to be a better person, so thank you for that. You're my best friend, I love you so much and I'm so proud to be able to call you my wife. Aww. So, if I could ask you to all please to be upstanding. Raise the glass to my amazing wife, to Laura. Laura. Now you can be seated again. <laughs> now I'm rattling on a little bit now, but before I hand over to my best man, I would like to make a few things noted for the record. First of all, despite what I just said a few moments ago, this man is a um, is a civil servant for Her Majesty's government, so he is well skilled in the art of stretching the truth. So, <laughs> please take whatever he has to say with a very large pinch of salt. <laughs> Secondly, I'd also like to remind Chris that without wanting to presume, we may one day be sat in separate seats. And as you know, I have a really long memory. So I hope you've been balanced and fair with all of the stories that you're about to tell. <laughs> but the final thing for me to say is, Please enjoy the food, enjoy the wine, and enjoy the dancing later on. Thank you very much. Aww.